Hey guys, it's Eric. Welcome to the video. So I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think what I should do a video on and I'm debating in my mind. I'm thinking, well, I don't know if this is any good. So sometimes those are the best ones. So we'll see. So um, have you ever heard somebody say they want to get into trucking because they hear the rates are really good? And then have you ever heard someone say that uh, they're getting out of trucking because the rates are in the garbage? I definitely have. So I just want to talk about, I have talked about this before, but I want to go in more depth on, this is only my opinion from what I've observed over the years of being in trucking, okay? So I'm not saying this is a fact, but it's backed up by facts, okay? So it's, it's real life experience and just my opinion on it, on pondering it, okay? So basically, before I even get into talking about that, have you guys ever thought or wondered why uh, owner operators go out of business because they can't afford to make it work? Meanwhile, the same, um, there'd be another truck running the same lane that's got a driver in their truck and for some reason they don't go out of business. Um, I mean, I understand why. It's because it, it has nothing to do with the rate. It has to do with the person driving in the truck doesn't understand that they are running a business and they're not doing a very good job at running their business. And the person who has the driver in the truck is running a business and understands the numbers and or maybe, you know, like just speaking on this point, let's just assume that he's not going out of business next week and we don't know that. So that always could be too. He just might have a little bit of extra money to to uh, lose money an extra week before he ends up going out of business or she. But that's not the point. So anyways, so now getting back to what I want to talk about, the whole point of this is basically to talk about brokers and then to talk about um, working through a broker and then working through um, a direct shipper. So in my opinion, for what I do, it's not worth trucking unless I'm building my business. If I'm working for a broker, I'm building the broker's business that they can end up selling. Now, I love what I do. I love trucking. The goal isn't to sell the business. Like that's not that's not the goal. But the goal is for me in business is to build assets. A business is an asset, and especially if you can sell it, you know. Like my my business is worth my business. If you evaluated my business. You know, it would be, it would be, it's actually worth something because I can go and I can say that, you know, for three years in a row, my business has done over a million dollars a year. It has a track record. And, and I can say, I have this client and I do this much business with this client. I have this client, I do this much business with this client and so on and so forth. And it's not like I'm going on there and saying, well, man, nah, we had a bad month because the broker, you know, was, you know, the, the rates weren't good or whatever. I'm not jumping ship. I'm consistently, like, the rates don't go up and down for, for me because I don't work for a broker. I just, the, the rates don't go up and down. So, now, what happens in, what, what trips people up? Um, in building their own business, as in in getting their own clients, is that they don't want to go backwards to get ahead. And what I mean by that is, so right now, um, in my in the Midwest, and I mean it's it's a strong area for reefer freight, right? Um, but reefer freight right now is 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 hot, and it's. You know, I, I don't even know what it is because I don't do reefer, but it's probably three to 
three fifty, maybe even four bucks a mile, you know, one and it's weird that I even have to say this because what so for what I do, I just charge someone round trip for the whole thing and we don't mess with backhauls because I'm local so you can't by the time you fart around and get a backhaul you've you know, you have made no money for the day. See it's a different strategy what I do. The the people that I work for and the type of work that we do, we just we just you know that's just how it is so unless you're in long haul um dry bulk that's different but i'm not doing long haul dry dry bulk so what ends up happening is like somebody will get the opportunity to get a contract and then the people the shipper the direct shipper is actually like asking and a lot of times the trucking company to do the rate for less than what a broker is paying. And this is a baffling thing. This is, it, it doesn't make any sense from the outside looking in, but what I want to do is basically explain my opinion on it from the outside looking in. So, so for one, a, sh uh, a shipper, well, a broker's basically, if in my in my mind, a broker. Okay, so a sh a trucking company is looking for freight, and and for me in my business, I prioritize my customers on how on, on th a few different things. One is, I mean, do they pay? First off, do they pay at all? Like, if they don't pay, then they're not a good client, right? Two is how quick do they pay? Three is what's the rate? And four is how consistent do they need our us to work for them? You know, like, so do we run loads for them every week, meaning that we have a consistent cash flow with them and, and money coming every week? Or is it, or is it, you know, Every couple of months we hear from them and we might work for them like one week uh, out of every couple of months or something like that because that would that would be a different relationship than somebody that is looking for freight every single day. Now what I do in my company is I look for the consistent freight and it pays a lot of times it pays better than what the spot market is because then the brokers are just being, um, because in my industry, you know, I'm charging what the going rate is, but if we're talking about other industries, it's, it, it does, it is different, you know? So, so I'm trying to, basically what I'm trying to say though, is like how I look at things I guess I'll just talk about how I look at things. So what I do is I, um, what I do is I will have, I want to like make sure that my bills are paid and expenses are paid. And then I'll have like a construction company call me who is not my bread and butter client. Right. But I do do construction and they'll call and they'll say, Hey, we need, you know, a thousand ton of rock moved, um, we, we have two weeks to do it, you know, can you help us out with that? And then I'll say, yes, you know, I can't, I, I will help you out with that. I'll do what I can. And they'll hire like five other trucking companies to get it done. They're basically hiring us as brokers. Now we, what well, it's our job to do is to go out and, and use our contacts to find other people to help us with this this hot these hot loads this hot work so then as a business owner it's my job to try and get my trucks on the good work it might pay you know 25 percent higher than what my everyday work is on now it's this is like trucking arbitrage so what i'm trying to do is I'm trying to put my trucks on the higher paying, more profitable work. And then finding other trucking companies that are slow, 
because everybody has times where they're slower than that they're not. Um, just like businesses, you know, like some businesses are busy in the summer and some are busy in the winter and some are every every business has a slow season so like if if a trucking company works for a specific industry or business they might be slow at that time so it's my job to find the work and then get and then try to get my trucks on the better paying work and then also providing value i'm not ripping off any trucking company here i'm providing value because they're taking a zero and instead of a zero now they're going to work I'm going to give them some of my, it's good work. It just doesn't pay as much as something else, right? Or it's just me having the option of doing it. I might know that I might, even my drivers might just want to stay on what they're doing, but I always just take it on and it, it just, can, the consistency of basically you want to have more work than you, than you know what to do with. You don't want to commit to something that you can't do. That's not what I'm saying, but you just want to, be able to try to do it so like what a broker so that's what i do you know when i use the word broker loosely but the reason why in real trucking brokers have a higher rate is because first off i don't know maybe their rate does go down maybe they're re renegotiating rates every you know week or couple of weeks i don't know but the the point is, is that if what what I'm trying to, to say is if somebody calls me and they need help and they need me to move loads, the rate's automatically going up. But if I come across as needy, which I want to have more work than always, then I never know what to do with. So that way, if I come across as needy, then, or if I don't, feel very solid about my finances then I'm going to start doing work uh, I don't even want to say that I get I'm guessing you guys get where I'm going with that but I don't exactly jive with that but what I'm what I'm trying to say is is that to me as a business owner it's worth not having to go screw around on a load board all the time and doing work at just a, a fair price at not like a get rich quick price but just a fair price and always knowing that I'm going to do that work at that price. And what ends up happening is if my clients have more work than they know what to deal with, I might have, I might be working side by side with another company that's making more than me for the time being because their problem is they need their freight moved and I can't, I'm at full capacity. So they might have to charge more to get somebody else to do something stupid like piss off a guaranteed income and go leave that so that they can go and do something that's going to last. So they can go, you know, on Facebook or Instagram and say they made $20,000 in a week, but now they're starting from zero again because they just basically bent over this shipper this direct shipper that they, they're not going to consistently get that price and then they had something consistent but now they went and left that and now they're out of business because they're oh the the rates this is what and now they think that's what the rate should always be but they're not seeing the whole picture of it so what a what it what basically i'm saying is there's a place for a a trucking company and there is a place for a broker and I feel like why wouldn't you just want to be both you know like you should that should be what your goal is to be both but it's not like a, a broker is you know a good broker is not is not really your enemy I mean they're they're good they're they're getting they're charging higher rates because the company's coming to them and they need it moved and they're not willing to pay the trucking company more because that would put them at a, at a less of power you know like sometimes dispatchers whole job and i'm not talking about at a broker i'm talking about at a shipper their whole job is to make the trucking company seem like they're not worth their worth and to question their you know their value 
They never want to act like they need you. You know, so... Because if they do that, and they, they're not going to be like, oh, we just can't seem to get enough trucks. Well, then, obviously, prices need to go up because supply and demand. So, I know this is a lot of rambling, but hopefully this opens up maybe a dialogue for the guys that have been doing this to kind of put their two cents in. And then, um, maybe we can have a, I don't know, maybe we can revisit this whatever i don't know let me know what you guys think or if i just confused you guys more than anything else thanks for watching don't forget to like the video if you've suffered through this much